Hi everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be attempting to make bone broth and I thought this style of video would actually be better for this recipe because I actually don't really know what I'm doing yet and I thought it would be just kind of fun to document the process and see if it works. I tried to make bone broth uh, back in May of 2017 and it was a total failure. <laughs> um, it just turned out to be regular stock. I clearly didn't cook it long enough or something, but it it wasn't the like gelatinous bone broth stuff that um, I knew it was supposed to be. So I've got a couple days. It's super snowy here. We're not really going anywhere. So I'm going to actually be combining a few recipes and I'll show you my sources. I found this article on Bon Appetit and it's bone broth. You're doing it wrong. Well, if you make these common mistakes, which I probably made every single one of these mistakes the first time I made it. So I'm going to be following this. And then I also found this site, uh, Platings and Pairings, which she gives some direction about how to make bone broth in your slow cooker which I actually like that because everything I've read is that you can have this stuff simmering for like 24, 48, 72 hours. I mean, I don't like the idea of having my stove on for that long. I'm a little paranoid. So I thought I would follow the tips from the Bon Appetit article, but then use the slow cooker method because keeping my slow cooker on low for that long doesn't freak me out as bad. So let me show you what bones I have. They're beef femur bones. Now, everything I read said that you could use like marrow or knuckles or feet. Um, I don't know. This is what I was able to find at Kroger. So this is what I bought. I have three packages of them because I'm going to try to make a decent amount of this bone broth. The Bon Appetit article says start by boiling your bones. Um, and I guess this is supposed to remove impurities, like a quick boil for like 20 minutes, which... Apparently I'm in a rush because that doesn't sound quick to me, but this is what we're gonna do. So I've got my stock pot here, and I'm gonna stick my bones in the pot, cover them with cold water, and bring them up to a boil for about 20 minutes. Then we'll strain it out. So I'll show you what that looks like when I have that ready. I'm just gonna cover these with cold water, I guess until it's just covered. Now it's covered. I feel like it already has some stuff coming out of the bones, which is good. I think this quick boil is just intended to get kind of the less desirable stuff out of the bones quickly, and then all the good stuff is left. Okay, I have one change that I might be doing. I found another article on the kitchen. They are saying that it's sometimes good to add just like a couple bones that have some meat on them, and I noticed the bones that I have aren't very meaty, um, but I do have some short ribs that I picked up yesterday, so I might pop like two short ribs into the oven when I roast the other bone. I'm not as worried about those ones needing to boil because when I cook short ribs, I don't have to boil those first. So I, I think if I just stick those in with the roasting stage, they'll be fine. This is where I always go wrong. I always change my plan. But you know what? That's what's fun about the kitchen. I'm going to experiment and see how this goes. Also, this is taking forever to boil. Okay, so here are the short ribs that I bought yesterday. I'm going to do the rest of these in the instant pot later, which will probably be another video, so look out for that. Okay, I walked away for two seconds and it boiled over, so it's finally boiling now though. We're good, pretty gross. This is all the gunk that, yeah, I agree, Bon Appetit. I don't really want that in my um, bone broth. So let's see, we'll set a timer. Okay, it's been 20 minutes and this is what it's looking like right now, which looks pretty gross. I'm really glad I did this though because this does show that like all this stuff, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look like something that should be in the broth. I'm gonna go ahead and skim this out and put it onto the baking sheet with my two little short ribs and we'll get it in the oven. This is what I am pulling off. This is not the right spoon to be using for this. Okay, so here are the bones on the tray. You can see they're very hot. They look a little different than they did before. I'm gonna lay this. I'll lay this guy down. So he's not so tall. And they're ready to go in a 450 degree oven, I believe for about a half hour. I'm gonna kind of watch them. 450 to me seems aggressively high, but again, I completely failed the first time I made this, so I'm just going to follow the steps given and uh, see how it turns out. 
I think I'm also going to drizzle these with olive oil a little bit because I saw in another article saying that that can help brown them up a little bit and bring some good flavor. So I think I'm gonna do that, put them in the oven for about a half hour, we'll check them halfway through, and hopefully they'll be nice and golden and ready to go. Okay, I just took the bones out of the oven. You can hear them sizzling. What I ended up doing was flipping them at about 20, 25 minutes, and then I actually let them in for a total of 45 minutes because after 30, I felt like they could go a little further. I think this is far enough. Um, they're very fragrant. I can kind of smell them all over my house, so it smells very roasty. They've definitely darkened a little bit. They look, I don't know, they look pretty good. So 45 minutes at 450, I think that's gonna be pretty good. So now I'm gonna put them in my slow cooker. Okay, so here are the bones in the crock pot. A couple places I read said that if you have like little crusty bits on your pan, you could release it with water. So that's what I'm gonna try to do to try to get that in there. So I'm just gonna see if I can get this without making a huge mess. Okay, also in my research, I have seen that one of the reasons if you have trouble with the bone broth setting up is that you're adding too much water, which could have definitely been a problem that I did last time. So I'm gonna be very careful not to add too much water. And I'm also only going to add a few other ingredients. Some people put a lot of vegetables in theirs. I am going to keep it simple <laughs> and just put um, onions, garlic, and maybe some black peppercorns. I also am going to add a little bit of this, apple cider vinegar, just a second. <laughs> okay. Um, I have read that that helps draw the minerals, I guess, out of the bones. So I just have a little bit left in this bottle, but I think this will be enough. So there it goes. I don't know. That was about a couple tablespoons. All right. So now I'm just going to put the lid on and just set this to low. Do manual low and my crock pot has an insane beep. If anybody has the same crock pot, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to watch it to make sure it's not bubbling too much because that was one thing, again, I read that you should really make sure that you're cooking it on very, very low temperature. Um, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it and if it looks like it's getting too hot, I might switch it to warm because I've read that sometimes that that can be good too. So I'm gonna let this go and I will see you tomorrow to see the 24 hour stage to see if it needs to go further. I'm hoping to get 48, but we'll see. That might be ambitious. But anyways, see you tomorrow. We are at the 24 hour mark. So I wanted to show you what it's looking like. Um, I have to say it was a little bit weird knowing my crock pot was on all night. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, but let me show you what it looks like so far. Ooh, stuck. It seems like it's going well. Um, it looks like the colors pretty good, um, it smells very good, and I might be able to actually stop cooking it now, but I think I really wanna try to push for at least 48 hours for this batch to really see um, what that extra time would do to it. Um, oh, one note, the crock pot that I have, it's this uh, Hamilton, Hamilton Beach, it's like set and forget one, and I've had it for years and I love it. I have noticed though that when it's on low for an extended period of time, it tends to get a little bit bubblier than I kind of think it needs to. So I've been actually toggling it back and forth between the low setting and the warm setting uh, just to control the temperature to make sure it's not cooking too high. Just something to note, maybe your crock pot does the same thing, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Um, and again, that's me just guessing that hopefully that's not messing anything up. So anyways, I will see you tomorrow with hopefully the uh, final step. So we are at the about, um, I guess it's, it's been more like 52 hours at this point instead of 48, but I got busy this afternoon and just decided to let it go a little bit further before I got back to it. 
So let me show you what it looks like. The smell is amazing, it smells so good. I am going to now go through the process of straining out the bones and cooling it down. In this, it seems like it's very important to make sure that you cool it down properly, quickly, and um, to avoid any bacteria growing in the bone broth. And you also don't wanna put the super hot bone broth into your refrigerator because that's not gonna work either. So I have a couple ideas. Um, the Bon Appetit article suggested straining everything out then adding a couple um, cups of ice cubes in it to like really rapidly cool it down and then pouring it into like a shallow dish so that it lost temperature very quickly. Um, so I think I might try that. It is crazy cold here, so I might, after I do that, stick it out in my garage um, where nothing will get to it, but it's extremely cold out there. So I think I will do that as a step of trying to cool it down quickly um, without messing up my fridge. First, I'm gonna turn this off, give my crock pot the first break it's had in two days. Look at that. I hope this isn't bubbling too much, but it smells so good. When I pull these out, you see that bone? How you can see all the different holes and things in it? I'm hoping that means that all of that stuff kind of got pulled out into the broth. I have the bones here, and then anything that looked meat-like, I put in a separate bowl, although I think there's some bone in there. So I'm gonna have to kind of sift through this bowl a little bit closer to pull out what is the meat from the short ribs and what is other stuff that's maybe not gonna be as um, good to actually eat as meat. So, but I just didn't wanna lose that. I'm going to put the rest of this through a strainer into a wide dish and then add the ice cubes to help cool it down quickly. Okay, the reason I did the second strain, besides just picking out the stuff, because I had peppercorns and things in there that I didn't want floating in the broth, and I also wanted to be able to catch any little bits of gristle and bone that maybe fell off during the very long cooking process. I also see this layer of fat that is settling to the top. Um, that is going to be tallow. So once this all firms up, I'm gonna skim that off and save that and cook with it. So right now I'm gonna add a couple ice cubes, cover it, and stick it out in my garage. I only added the equivalent of about a cup of ice cubes because I really don't wanna water this down, but I don't want to <laughs> contaminate it either. Okay, let me show you what it looks like in the garage. Um, but if you live in somewhere that has, you know, that you can stick it out in a, an attached garage or even outside, as long as you're not gonna have any critters, I think it would be a good way to do it. But here, I've got it on my re recycling bin on a sheet pan because it was a little bit easier to carry setting it on here and I just covered it so nothing fell in it. Okay, so this is what the bone broth looks like after being in the fridge overnight. I can kind of show you from the side here. You see, this is the bone broth and this is the tallow. Last night when I was waiting for it to solidify, I poked my finger in it right here before it was hard. So there's like a weird little hole here, but I can tell from the consistency that it's nice and gelatinous. I'm going to take my knife and run it along the outside edge of this and remove the tallow. I am personally going to measure how much bone broth this made so that I can really calculate to see if it's worth it to make my own um, with the time and money and ingredients and things versus buying it. Okay, so this is the tallow. It came off in a nice big sheet and I just kind of broke it up. So this is the bone broth. And you can see it has a nice gelatinous consistency, which is kind of crazy, but at the same time, I think that means that I did it right. Okay, so final measurement. I have about six and a half cups of bone broth here, so let me show you. I filled up this measuring cup once to the four cup and I transferred it to here. And then I measured, I filled it up again to about the two and a half cup. Um, so that's a total of six and a half cups plus tallow, which I will kind of figure out <laughs> what I'm gonna do with that next. With the six and a half cups of broth this recipe made, um, I definitely would have to say that it is more economical to make your own um, because places I've seen, it's about, you know, for really good quality bone broth, um, it's like, 
12 to $15 for 20 ounces. So the fact that I spent about 14, 13, 14, or maybe even $15 and got six and a half cups, which is like 52 ounces, um, is really good. Now, I think I could probably do better on the price because if I start being better about like saving bones from roasts and chickens and things like that, I will be able to get those bones without having to buy them specifically to make bone broth. Um, so the price will vary and I think you could actually do it for even a lot cheaper than I did it. But, um, you know, it's a learning experience. This is my first time doing this. So I've kind of figured out a couple things that I might do differently next time. I will definitely be doing this again. I want to try a version using uh, pig's feet. I want to try a chicken version, but I also don't necessarily see myself doing this on a weekly basis because it was very labor intensive. I mean, you saw how much kind of was going into, especially the first day and then running my crock pot for two days. Um, that wasn't free, you know, <laughs> you have to pay for the electricity. So is it something I'm going to do every single week? Probably not, but maybe a couple times a month. And then I will likely try to find a brand of bone broth that I like and that is relatively reasonably priced to kind of keep in the freezer to fill in the weeks that I just don't get around to making this. So right now I am heating up a cup of this to taste test and all I added to it to heat it up was salt because there was no salt in this. So um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to stomach a cup of it unsalted. So I'm going to just add salt and just try to get the flavor of it with only salt. But normally I would add some other things to it to kind of make it more interesting. But I am really pleased with the way um, this went. I actually made <laughs> bone broth and also a big bowl of tallow that I will figure out something to do with. Okay, so here's for the taste test. It's very hot. It's really good actually, surprisingly. Now I did add a fair amount of salt because I'm someone who needs a lot of salt in my food. I like salt. Um, but it tastes like I'm just drinking a really good cup of like beef soup. Oh, it fogged up my glasses. <laughs> Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so good. Test number two. It tastes good with salt. i sure there are kind of hardcore bone broth people out there that can drink it without salt. I am not one of those people. So yeah, I am very happy with this. Will it be every week? Probably not, but frequently, hopefully. <laughs> um, I will probably be talking about some of my favorite ways to season this up in another video. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the blog link below for more information and kind of the write up of exactly what I did in case you want to try this method at home. And just so you know, I mean, this was an experiment and I will also link the articles that I use to kind of help me along my way too. So I'm excited. My <laughs> only attempt of bone broth to actually work. So thank you so much for following along in this crazy bone broth adventure. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.